Good evening, this is FPC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. In tonight's bulletin, PM urges unions to work for the benefit of all Fijians. Government to come down tough on businesses which defraud the country. And exporters recognized for outstanding contribution to Fiji. Prime Minister Varenge Bainimarama has called on union leaders to work together for the benefit of all Fijians. Speaking at the Prime Minister's Exporter of the Year Award at the Sheraton Resort in Denarao Nandi last night, Panimarama said Fiji is a developing nation and needs to protect its economy. Alan Stoltz reports. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbanimarama says Fiji is not a developed nation that can afford the luxury of essential industries and services being disrupted. No one wants industrial conflict in Fiji. The interests of Fijian workers, trade unionists, employers and the government are one and the same. They need to be to grow our economy. Pani Marama stressed Fiji cannot allow a small group of people to hold a nation to ransom by misrepresenting our circumstances to the rest of the world. He says some union leaders have claimed that there are certain restrictions on workers' rights. This, he says, is not true. Employees under the amended provisions have the right to choose to join the union or not, whether they are in the sense of industry or not. Employees in all sectors have the right to collective bargaining. Employees in the sectors, like others, have the right to have their union dues deducted from their check of, check of system. The notice period to go on a strike has been reduced to 14 days from 28 days. There is a tripartite tribunal that can quickly dispose of matters or disagreements arising out of the essential services and sectors. I ask you to imagine a situation where no notice is required from those in the essential services. A situation in which the pilots of Fiji Airways might go on strike five minutes before a flight is to take off from LA or about to leave for Singapore. What would it do to the image of the country? What would it do to the confidence in our transportation system? What would, it, what would it do to the economy? Would you have confidence in transporting your exports on Fiji Airways? The Prime Minister says the focus of his government is to strengthen the rights of ordinary Fijians. He said Fiji is compliant with all core ILO conventions and should not be subjected to an ILO commission of inquiry. Ellen Stahls, FBC News. Fiji loses over $150 million annually due to fraudulent practices by some businesses in the country. The government has announced new tax measures in the 2016 national budget to stop unscrupulous traders from stealing from the state. Ritika Patap tells us more. The Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority will set up a system in the next few months that will link FERCA to supermarket cash registers so that all transactions are reported automatically in real time. Five million dollars has been set aside in the 2016 budget to invest in technology for the finance ministry and FERCA to ensure better reporting and compliance. We need to do that because we found also in some su supermarkets they have like you know six or seven cash registers. Two of them is only for them. The other is official. The other is unofficial. What we are saying is that we want people to make money, but please don't steal from the system. We're trying to create a system where it makes it less of an opportunity for people to steal. Finance Minister Ayaseyed Kayum, while presenting the 2016 national budget, 
gave examples of individuals and companies that have been ducking from paying taxes. Don't try and make uh, huge amounts of profit just on one sale. We want you to make profit. Make plenty of profit. But don't make one kill on one sale. If you are, for example, selling something at, at the moment for $50, but you can sell it for $25 and still make a profit because you probably buy it with all your costs at maybe $10. Why not sell it for $25? Why not sell it for $28? Why are you selling it for $50? Because if you sell it for $25 and you go and buy that stuff, now you probably buy two of that. Sayed Kayum says much income goes unreported through the informal economy or through simple tax evasion because Fiji has for a long time led a credible system to encourage or compel tax compliance. So in our budget calculations, we've been very conservative. What we are saying is that because of compliance, we'll earn a, another $120 million more. So we've been very conservative. So we hope to obviously, you know, uh, gain more. I mean, I mean, we have to understand that a lot of businesses in Fiji are doing the right thing, but some of them aren't. There's a higher propensity of that people in the sort of groceries division selling goods there is some problems with them and also within that group also not all of them but it's those few people who actually make things very difficult meanwhile FERCA will develop a tax agent's code of ethics to ensure that everyone understands the rules and the conduct required of tax agents Sayed Kayum says then there will be no excuses for dishonesty and agents will be held accountable for the advice they give to their client and companies Ritika Pratap FBC News. Police are questioning two suspects in relation to the death of a 29-year-old mechanic. The body of the deceased was found in a cane field in San Beto Nandi yesterday afternoon. Police spokesperson Atunaisa Sokomori says the two were taken in after they were found with the victim's vehicle. Investigation continues. Tropic Wood won the Westpac Prime Minister's Exporter of the Year Award at Cheriton Fiji Resort in Nandi last night. The annual awards brought together top exporters and members of the business community to celebrate the achievements of exporters in Fiji. Alan Stoltz reports. Tropic Woods Industries Limited Executive Chair Faze Khan says success did not come overnight. We just went about identifying what the gaps were in the company and how best we could uh, close those gaps uh, and, and ensure that our business was successful. So uh, yeah, I'm so glad that we have won today. Ram Sami and Sons Fiji Limited won the Agriculture Exporter of the Year Award. The CEO Rajendra Sami says he is very proud of this achievement. Uh, our team itself, I will say, you know, we got a very good uh, team in Ramsami and Sons. With their support, we have been achieving a lot of things in the company itself. Chief Executive of Standard Concrete Industries, Mosese Volovola, says winning the Manufacturing Exporter of the Year Award has only boosted the company's morale to achieve greater things. Potential is huge. Our vision, we are the biggest in Fiji in uh, our line of business, uh, in uh, concrete products and quarry products, but our vision is to be the biggest in the South Pacific, and uh, we are on our way there. Abinesh Kumar won the Youth Entrepreneur Award. Despite his young age and the fact that a few of his staff are school dropouts, Kumar says young people can achieve so much if they really put their minds to it. I have successfully, uh, with the contract with certain Fiji, Western Resort and many other international resorts in Fiji, specialized in tiling. So with my staff, I would say they are very dedicated and determined staff who are willing to work. And they are, they are professionals in their own way. It doesn't matter they are school dropouts, but they are professionals in their own way. And to encourage such youths in the country is my responsibility as a Fijian. This year marks the 23rd year of the Prime Minister's Exporter of the Year Awards. Ellen Stahls, FBC News. Coming up, we take a look at Fiji rugby rep Leone Nakarawa in our successful Fijian segment. Mera chand mujhe aya hai nazar, ay raat zara tham tham ke guzar. Chaya hai nasha mere aakho par, ay raat zara tham tham ke guzar. 
रह जाए ना प्यासा मेरा प्यार मेरे बाहों में भर दे मेरा यार ऐ रात जरा थम थम के गुजर ऐ रात जरा थम थम के गुजर है दोस्तों मैं हूँ जितेन शांडिल आप रात के बाद हमारे साथ अब रफ्तार प्रोग्राम में तीन से लेकर रात सात के बीच शामिल हो सकते हैं मिर्ची एफ एम Welcome back to FPC News. Health services will improve come next year. Assistant Health Minister Veena Bhatnagar says with the increased allocation the ministry will look at further increasing health staff. Bhatnagar says they want to provide quality health services to Fijians around the country. Uh, the allocations given to the Ministry of Health and Medical Services and we will definitely try to do our best and work within the budget and and, and of course improve and enhance our service deliveries. Now the ministry has been allocated 280 million dollars for next year an increase of 11 million dollars from the current budget The public is being urged to avoid hiring those vehicles which are not licensed taxi operators The Land Transport Authority is clamping down on those drivers who are providing services without a licensed taxi meter Savaratambore reports The Land Transport Authority has a list of private vehicles that are providing taxi services to the public around the country. In recent time, it has been noticed that private vehicles have illegal taxi meters installed within the car, and these drivers are charging passengers fares. It's on the passengers as well, eh? See, these vehicles are there because the people are using them. And uh, that was to people when you see those kind of vehicles stopping and uh, pretending that uh, they are uh, service uh, uh cars meaning that uh, they operate as taxis and if they do do not have a, a proper yellow plate or the taxi signage you uh, know that's that's illegal that's illegal Pina Deva says LTA is working together with other stakeholders in the taxi industry to eliminate this illegal activity what we will do with this kind of vehicle we are going to seize them okay we are looking for them and once we catch them we are going to seize them we are going to remove uh, the meters and we are going uh, to give them fines and it can go up to about $200 uh, for anybody that is using these uh, meters and uh, um, running private cars as taxis vehicles that provide taxi services need to have a certification from the land transport authority sabira tambua fbc news The National Fire Authority is taking a proactive approach this year as we enter the festive season with the Festival of Lights just 2 days away. The NFA is warning the public to take precautions and make this a fire-free Diwali. Farzana Nisha reports. Chief Fire Officer John O'Connor says fire safety is the responsibility of all Fijians and can be avoided if all rules are followed. We usually uh, out there doing community awareness. We are always doing uh, door-to-door awareness, eh? and for this Diwali, if you note the print media, we are reminding members of the public eh, of the importance of uh, taking that little bit of extra care to make sure that we all have uh, an enjoyable and, uh, more importantly, a fire-free fire eh? Diwali celebration. Eh? O'Connor says a lot of cooking will be done in the next few days, and people will also be decorating their homes with lights and lighting fireworks to celebrate Diwali. If you're using uh, candles and beers, uh, make sure that you use them safely. Eh? Put them in a place that uh, you know will not result in fire. Uh, when you're cooking, eh? uh, please don't leave your cooking unattended. Eh? Be attentive to your cooking. Um, and likewise, if you're playing with uh, firecrackers, eh? um, we are urging our parents to supervise their children eh? so that they can play with their firecrackers safely. Eh? Like all other years, NFA teams will be on alert with officers moving around the country monitoring the situations. There have been no major fire incidences recorded for the past two years, and the NFA is hoping for another safe Diwali this year. For Zana Nisha, FBC News. Becoming a rugby player is something that flying Fijians rugby rep Leone Nakarawa never dreamt about. But his dad is the one who stood by his side and motivated him all along. In our successful Fijian segment tonight, we will show how this Kandavu lad got into the rugby field and now has become one of the famous rugby players, not only for Fiji but the world as a whole. Savara Tambua tells us the story. Successful Fijians is brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. 
Growing up in a religious family background is something Leon Nakarao believes has taken him to where he is today. He does love volleyball other than rugby, but because of the struggles and difficulties he has gone through with his two sisters and four brothers. Like from a struggle family, you would like to have the same thing, but you, you can't. And then because of uh, like because of the struggle we go through, so it's it's hard. And then that what uh, I think that what motivates me a lot too, because. Uh, uh, when, like growing up, I I don't like my my my, my children to go through what I what I went through. So that's what I think that was more emotional. He started his rugby career when representing army for the Sukuna Bowl competition in 2006 to 2013, and sometimes lost hope when things didn't go his way. But his dad always encouraged him to focus more on rugby. I didn't tell anyone that I was still start to play rugby till I, till the till in 2009 when I joined the Fiji HPU Fiji HPU the high and then they saw me and then they asked, hey how did you how did you how did you do that because uh, we we knew you we were you only to play football and then from there then my father started to encourage me to go further and further and start to keep on working hard. Nakarawa rates Semi Sinayavo as his favorite sportsman, but did not know that one day they'll be in the same team. Uh, I used to love watching Semi Sinayavo, the giant from, uh, <coughs> giant from Nawaka. And I used to, like when I was small, I used to play, and then I was, I was tell the boys, tell my hey, I'm Semi Sinayavo, I'm Semi Sinayavo. But uh, I, was like, I was like shocked when I first got into the Fiji and Fiji Frank Fiji team in 2009. And then I have to share a room with the same mission I was just looking at him and then I was, I was like really shocked. <laughs> uh, winning the my first ever Super Nobel was my was my first ever uh, was one of my great achievements. Uh, winning my winning uh, two Super Nobels and I think winning two Mari Sevens and uh, most uh, most given most of my great achievement is uh, winning the Hong Kong Seven in 2013. Successful Fijians was brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. Coming up in sports, Ryan banks on local players for World Series. Welcome to FBC Sports. Vodafone Fiji 7's coach Ben Ryan says he prefers to use only local base players for the busy World Series season that lies ahead. While not entirely ruling out using professional players from overseas, Ryan believes the local reps add a certain edge to his plans for the series and the Rio Olympic Games. Chalindal Vakavaka has more. Ben Ryan has an understandable soft spot for local players who are putting in the hard yards to be selected into the national 7th side. Um, they make a lot of sacrifices. They are nowhere near the sort of money that these guys overseas are on, and um, and and for them, you know, they, they they it means everything. You know, they're living and breathing sevens every day. While Ryan is seriously considering limiting his selection to just local players, he will still keep tabs on those overseas who have picked his interest. There's two categories of overseas players, in, in my opinion. There's the ones that I've coached. So you take the Masilevus, um, Lapani Potiers, Semi Kunatanis, Samasoni Viriviris. And then you've got the guys that are playing in France or Europe um, that I haven't coached. Mm. I, less, I, I know about their, what they do on the field, but I know less about what they're like as men. It's a dilemma that Ryan must bear as he continues the search for a formidable squad. For now, the 12-man squad that will be selected for the Dubai and Cape Town 7th tournaments next month will be made up entirely of local players. Tsalen Dothakadaka, FBC Sports. Abu Zayed scored a last-minute goal to help the Vodafone Fiji football side secure a one-all draw against Vanuatu in Port Vila yesterday. The host took an early lead and led for the majority of the friendly international match. 
before considering a penalty in added time, allowing Zaid to sneak in the equaliser. Chalindal Dakadaka once again. The difference is, is that we have tried our new formation, that 4-3-3 uh, that formation, and it worked out. And the best part of Frank is that uh, he has confidence in every single player. And some of the changes he did uh, with the under-20, under-23 boys going in, it made a difference. As well as the arrival of talisman skipper Roy Krishna. The best part will be that we'll have uh, Roy with us on uh, on Tuesday, so definitely it's, uh, it's, uh, Roy being part of the team, it's going to be a totally a different ball game. Eh? The boys will get more confidence and, and it should be a very good game. Christmas inclusion is sure to add more firepower to the sides attacking Arsenal. A new winner will be crowned at the Islands Apparel Futsal Tournament at Nandi Muslim College this afternoon. Defending champions Red Devils were bundled out in the second round of eliminations, losing to Northland 2-0. Northland is taking on four R men in black in the semi-finals, while Waymaro is taking on nickel strikers. And the winning team will collect $1,100 and the runners-up $350. Stoke City beat Chelsea 1-0 to heap more pressure on Blues manager Jose Mourinho after his club slumped their seventh league defeat this season in the Barclays Premier League. Chelsea, the champions of last season, are now just three points above the bottom three and 13 spots short of the top four. Now Manchester United moved to within a point of Premier League leaders Manchester City after defeating West Bromwich Albion 2-0. This was the Red Devils' first win in three games and keeps them in fourth spot on the points table. A quick update on the other games. West Ham drew one all against Everton. Newcastle beat Bournemouth 1-0. Leicester defeated Watford 2-1. Sunderland lost to Southampton 1-0. And Norwich beat Swansea by the same score margin. Occasional showers were experienced over the northern, the interior and eastern parts of the group today. A trough of low pressure lies slow moving just to the north of Fiji. Taking a look at the temperatures, Bar once again recorded the highest temperature at 32 degrees. Lambasa experienced 31 degrees. Nandi and Lotoka recorded 30 degrees. Suva was on 28 and Savu Savu was the coolest at 26 degrees. Now tomorrow's forecast, occasional showers of the northern parts of the group, the eastern and interior parts of the other larger islands. Isolated, isolated heavy falls are expected. Elsewhere, it will be fine apart from possible afternoon or evening showers. As for Tuesday, fine apart from brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. Our headlines once again, Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama has urged union leaders to work together for the benefit of all Fijians. Fiji loses over $150 million annually due to fraudulent practices by some businesses and exporters recognized for their contribution to Fiji. On to our poll question this week. Should fireworks restrictions be relaxed from 2016? You can visit our FPC website to take part. Remember, you can also send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FBC News. If you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. And before I go, I'd like to wish everyone on behalf of the newsroom and myself a very happy and safe Diwali. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. Good night. Somebody that I'm